Hey guys, my name is Nicolette Mashile. I am also known as The Financial Bunny. Welcome to The Financial Bunny TV. Um, today, I want to talk a little bit about a bias called familiarity bias, right? But I'll break it down a little bit a, a little bit later on in the video. Please do remember none of my videos constitute as financial advice. If you are, however, looking for financial advice, please speak to somebody that is certified and registered with the FSCA. So let's get into it. So I just came back from my walk, right? By the way, I've got a very cool challenge that I want to challenge you guys on right or i'm challenging myself rather so i'm passing it on so i walk ten thousand steps every single day so i read somewhere where if you don't like exercising you still need to give the body some movement right um i, I don't mind walking because when i walk i can do a whole lot of things i can i can listen to um, um, um a podcast i can write down my thoughts and uh, ideas i can listen to meditation i can actually work for me, that one hour that I walk every single day helps me actually do some work. So it's part of my morning routine now, right? So I walk 10,000 steps. If I don't make the 10,000 steps, let's say, for instance, I walk 7,000 steps, I will take the 3,000 steps and I will multiply it by 10 cents. And whatever the value is, I will then deposit into a savings account and hopefully be able to use that money for something else, right? Um, so it's, it's a whole wealth is health, health is wealth, whichever one that comes. Anyway, as I was walking, I realized something that I do. And it's so funny because I've been doing it for years and have not actually kind of realized it and let it click in my head. So I have a gospel playlist, right, on my Apple Music. And it has stayed the same probably for the last four years, right? It has stayed the same. I think I've got 17 tracks on that gospel um, 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 playlist. And let's be fair, I'm not a music person. Um, people will ask me what type of music you listen to. And I'm like, I listen to anything that I like. If I like a song, I'm going to listen to it. I obsess over it. I am a Virgo after all. Um, I'll just keep listening to it all the time. So I realize now in this gospel um, um, playlist that I've got, so I play gospel in the morning just to get my you know, tempo right, to get my mood right. It's part of my spiritual growth um, that I'm, I'm, I'm kind of investing in to try and grow spiritually um, and connect to my God, right? But at the same time, I realized something about this gospel uh, playlist. There are only like four songs that I actually play and I will keep playing them. I know what the words are. I know the lyrics. I know the changes. The way I'm so, so clued up on what is even going to play next on this gospel uh, 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 playlist, I will even skip certain songs because I'm just like, not the song. There's actually a song there that I love. Um, and it plays halfway. And I can hear the moment the other part of the song is going to come. And that part I don't like. So I just, the moment that part comes, I literally just change. Because I'm like, why are you changing the tempo of the song first and foremost? I just do not understand, right? Um, so I realize that I'm listening to the same gospel. And, and this potentially opportunity cost in economics could be that I'm literally missing out on new music. I'm missing out on different type of genre of music that I could be listening to, right? Um, but I think most importantly is the fact that I am I'm sticking to what I know, what feels familiar, and what I can predict. Now, obviously, I do have control issues. I do know that, which I'm working towards also. Um, but I realize my biggest thing is familiarity. I like to, I don't like surprises. I don't like things shocking me. I don't like, but, but that is also a hindrance because it means that sometimes I get so stuck in what is familiar and what I know that I don't explore new grounds, right? I don't explore new music. I don't explore new gospel songs. And I've actually got a friend who is who listens to gospel all the time. His name is Richmond. And I always see him talking about Ntokozo and all of these other you know, gospel artists. And obviously, I mean, Richmond is a musical genius. So I should be, you know, leaning into him to say, oh, what new gospel songs are out there that will give me, you know, the oomph that I'm looking for in the morning. But I still don't because I, I think also a little bit of me is, you know, I, I like what I like and I like what I know. You know what I mean? So I was thinking about it and thinking about my finances. In fact, yesterday I was thinking about my finances and I'm like, I need to sell some of my properties because to be fair, they just don't make sense. But I still circle back to saying property has always been that asset class that I kind of know and I kind of understand. Um, in fact, I was actually thinking about, and I need to sell one property and buy a block of flats. And I'm like, but you're still in property. You know, you're still in property. And that's one of the things that the familiarity bias will do to you is that it will, one, 
take away the ability to explore other asset classes, for instance. Um, it will also take away the ability to diversify your, 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 your finances and your income streams. In actual fact, me going into the gin business and alcohol business, retail business, is quite scary for me because it's like a big thing that I'm doing. But I realized it was because all of the other times I was sticking to what I know. And I'm like, no, I need a change in my life. So I'm, I'm, I'm asking you today, if you look at your finances and how you've been managing your finances, are you seeing any patterns of familiarity? Are you seeing that you are kind of defaulting back to the things that you know? Um, and of course, we always say invest in things you know, invest in things you understand. But just because you don't know it today and you don't understand it today does not mean you don't invest in understanding it, right? So granted, you may not understand, um, for instance, um, uh, 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 contractual debt agreements. You may not understand um, CFDs. You may not understand. Some people just don't even understand stock market and understanding how the stock market works or the bond market rather. Um, you know, with high interest rates, um, um, there are certain asset classes that are going to be doing quite. A, uh, 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 they're going to be thriving because those are the environments in which they thrive in, right? Um, and the issue, and even property, you know. Um, a lot of us think we know property so well, but there are other aspects. Like for instance, even within property, my property is heavily invested in buy to let and nothing else. Like I'm afraid, like I'm doing a bit of development now, but I'm afraid of things like buying to uh, a fixer upper or a flipping, uh, flipping a property or, you know, going into student accommodation. These are the things that I'm used to. So Although I believe so much in property, I'm still afraid to tap into what is not familiar. So we digress and default to what is familiar, what feels safe, and what is our comfort zone. So what I want to ask you today is, have you found that sometimes in your personal finances, the way you're managing your personal finances, you're sticking to your comfort zone? And how do you get out of it? How do you... How do you Educate yourself. Of course, I mean we're not we're not just doing things willy nilly for the sake of saying, oh, I'm not I'm not a victim of the familiarity bias here. So I'm trying out new things. I'm taking big risks. No, your risk offers you have to be informed and very calculated. Very important to make sure that you are calculating and you are informed in when you are making decisions, especially about your finances. Because remember, I always say it's a mathematical equation, right, or formula rather. What you put here. Plus, minus, divide, multiply by whatever you put here, it's going to eventually give you an answer. And the answer that you want is an answer that one, should be predictable. Two, should be an answer you like. Three, it should be increasing your net worth. And another thing that I, I, I was thinking about is many of us do not calculate our net worth every single year. Guys, it's important to calculate your net worth and your net worth should not be going backwards. So what is your net worth calculation? It is your assets minus your liabilities equals whatever it is that you own, right? Uh, or whatever it is that's left. And that is your net worth. And what should happen is that your net worth should be increasing every single year. Now, what we're finding is that as people get um, or if people's income increases, they often increase also their expenditures. So essentially, they actually move their net worth backwards or sometimes their net worth gets stagnant. Yes, there are going to be those years in your life where you are kind of accumulating so your net worth starts to grow because you are early, let's say your early 20s where you've just started a new job, you will have your net worth kind of skyrocketing because you are now all of a sudden having money, you can buy assets and if you're very smart and invest in really good assets, you know, your net net worth will come up and then you'll get to a point where in your life where you're starting to take out credit agreements maybe you're buying a car on loan you're buying a house on loan maybe you're taking out a credit card and all of a sudden now your net worth starts doing this and you need to make sure that you are riding this wave when your net worth is kind of starting to 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 decline or to level out that is when it's going to be very very important for you to keep a very good eye on your net worth do not lose control of your net worth to a point where it starts to go down like this because obviously higher interest rates means your liabilities are going up. Um, and in high interest rates, your liabilities generally will go up, right? Because you're paying out more um, to managing those debts and those liabilities. So it's very, very critical to make sure that you are taking care of that net worth. I know I just threw in the net worth thing when I was talking about the familiarity bias, but it just felt like it was quite an important thing to say at this moment. And you know, you guys know I'm a conduit of um, whatever higher power is giving us this information. So I just thought I should say it right now, but I'm going to leave it here. Do remember none of my videos constitute as financial advice. I'm not saying go out there and take out products just for the sake of not being a victim of the familiarity bias. I'm saying take care of everything. All right. Bye. Mwah.